In this video, I'm gonna talk about how you can alter your SEO strategy to continuously make money despite of what Google's doing with all this AI, all this new technology. I'm gonna show you a proven system that we're using right now with our clients that's turning around traffic and leads and revenue within a matter of weeks. And all it requires is a very simple change to your existing strategy. Let's get into it. So Google released this massive information and the SEO community is up in arms because we don't know how this is going to impact our traffic because this AI technology within search is hypothesized to cannibalize a lot of the traffic currently going to websites, could just be plagiarizing from websites, displaying it right in search and potentially taking a huge chunk out of organic traffic and that means revenue and also just the ability for us to sell in this market and sell SEO as a service. But fear not, we've tested the technology and while it is definitely going to cannibalize a lot of traffic, it's only gonna cannibalize traffic that doesn't really have any sort of business impact. And that's the key theme here. What we're gonna talk about is how to alter your approach to SEO, your keyword strategy, and how you attack content so that you're focused on making your clients more money. Because if you're not doing that in this new wave of what's happening, you're gonna get left in the dust because no businesses, as the market contracts and less and less real estate is available in Google, nobody's gonna to wanna to pay for just traffic, especially if that traffic is purely informational and is constantly getting gobbled up by AI searches. So let's jump on over my computer and take a look at what I mean. What we're looking at here is the traditional AIDA ADA marketing funnel taught everywhere. It's also widely applied to SEO in terms of understanding the intent behind people's searches to understand how we can serve different types of content at different stages in the journey. So let's just run through this real quick as a quick refresher. Top funnel searches are attention-based searches, AKA essentially high level searches that just indicate that a person is in market. So there's no direct correlation to your service, to your product, to your business, or to hiring you. It's really just helping us to put them in market. So we work with law firms. So it doesn't mean that somebody's searching for legal services, but they are searching for something that could indicate that they are potentially in market for lawyer services. So another way to think of this is what are people searching for before they're ready to hire an attorney? That's top funnel searches. Then we get into interest. Interest is searches indicating that somebody's interested in your solution, generally not your specific solution. So what that means, again, after somebody could be looking for information, precluding looking for an attorney, now we know that they are looking for an attorney, just not looking for your type of attorney or for you specifically or in your local market, hypothetically. Then we get into desire. Searches indicated that they're interested in your specific product or service, so they're aware now of you and you exist, and now they're searching for more information or they're refining their search, looking for competitors, looking for reviews, comparison shopping, etc. And then all the way down at the bottom here, this is just action searches. So they are ready to hire you specifically or one of your competitors. They're in market, they're looking for your service, they're looking exactly what you do, and they wanna take action on that search. So now let's scroll down here real quickly and look at what this means, specifically applying these two law firms. So with law firms, you know, I, it's not a, an exact science here in terms of having an exact search or buckets of search for each one of these different stages in the funnel here. We usually use just three stages for law firms because it's a pretty simple process for finding an attorney. But in terms of top funnel here, something along the lines of what's the legal limit for alcohol when driving in Florida, DUIs, uh, and the type of content that we'd wanna serve. So applying this specifically to law firms, you know, there's no exact science here. You can see that we have three Three examples here. You don't have to go all the way in for four examples. It gets a little bit repetitive in between interest and desire. It gets convoluted. It gets a little bit confusing. We like to simplify this. It's not an overly complicated process when somebody's looking for a law firm. You can, of course, extend this as needed. But essentially, top funnel here, looking at searches like what's the legal limit for alcohol when driving in Florida? So somebody that maybe a friend or a family member, or maybe they were impacted by a DUI, maybe they're just starting to look up in terms of were they over the limit? How much over the limit were they? Really starting that process of looking for an attorney for themselves or for somebody else. And the type of content that we usually use to trap, capture this type of traffic, blog posts, resource guides, videos, podcasts. So very high level informational based content. Then we get down to interest and desire, what to do after you get arrested for a DUI. So now again, they're further deeper in market, potentially looking for themselves or, or for somebody else again. And this would also be blog posts, resource guides, videos, and podcasts. Direct match content, directly matching that query, giving them very specific examples of what to do. And then down here, as we're getting into action, call DUI attorney near me and the types of content that would rank for this service pages, location pages, and then Google business profile pages for, for localized searches. Now, what I want to do is I want to show you what these searches actually look like in Google. Now, this is important because this is for before AI. So we take a search like this and 
you spent all this time doing keyword research, creating content, getting a writer done, maybe building links, you get it to rank first and what happens here? you get hit with this knowledge graph. Somebody is just looking for the answer here. There's this whole school of thought. And again, we go back to the funnel here and we look at the argument from SEOs. And this is really where SEOs, this isn't even an AI thing. AI is just gonna put a microscope on this. But a long time ago, SEOs lost their way and it became very cute if you will, it was less about conversions and more about traffic and ranking, getting exposures. We lied to ourselves. We told us that creating content at the top funnel here is how people discover you. We got to get their attention. Then we move them down the funnel. But Google shows us that's not the case because Google search results do not lie. This, all their search results here are based on how people interact with the SERPs. So when you see a knowledge graph like this or a knowledge panel or a no click search, and AI is just gonna make this even more of a no click, AI is just gonna answer this right away. What this tells us is that people don't wanna go to a website. They don't wanna scroll around and have to read through a whole article. They just want the answer that they want. So creating content around this has no business impact. We've lied to ourselves for the longest period of time saying that like, oh, this is how people discover us and this is how they find, no, like that's not the case. At the very top funnel, social media has taken over for this. People are not going to Google reading a blog post anymore and being like, oh my God, this lawyer is amazing. He hit everything that I was looking for nail on the head. I'm gonna call him or when I'm ready, I'm gonna call him or I'm gonna refer him to, like, it's not the way it works. Right? At the very top of the funnel, people are discovering through social media and through referrals and friends and stuff like that. So creating content around this type of search query has already been a waste of time. And once AI comes in and now we're just clicking a button to refine this search and get the answer that we want, people are going to go to the website even less, right? At least we still have this link here that cites the source that we can go to, you know, build a remarketing list, if you will, put them in market, but it's a waste of time and resources. So that's that search. Now let's go back and look at this one here, the next one down the funnel. What to do after you arrested for your DUI. So the first four results here are going to be paid search. And then we get another one here that's a slight knowledge graph, but also dives deeper into this. So this one is a little bit better, right? We can see that it's a little bit deeper intent. We can also see that there's ads here, meaning that there's some sort of conversion intent here. So I won't say that this is a waste of time, but this is also a national search, right? It's also, I guess, getting localized a little bit here because I'm local here in Florida. So it's localizing this. So putting this page on a website wouldn't be a total waste of time. Would I prioritize it first? No, absolutely not. But we can put it in the roadmap to be created later down the line after we've explored the next step of the funnel, which is gonna be the bottom funnel content here, right? So let's just tie this one here. Call DUI attorney near me. So what we see here again, we see four ads. This tells us that there's a lot of commercial intent here. If people are actually paying for these keywords. We then also see uh, the local pap here. This is tied to Google business profile. And then we get down into the results. Law info, looks like the first four results here are all aggregator websites, meaning you don't have the opportunity to rank in here. And I'll talk about this in a second as we get through deeper into here about how to actually turn this into money for your firm. But this SERP result here tells me that there's still an opportunity here for us to make money off this because the clear intent here based on the number of ads, based on this local pack here, we see, don't see a knowledge graph here. So the point I'm trying to make is that AI, I don't foresee this cannibalizing this type of SERP because again, Google shows us exactly what people want out of a search. Their technology understands and reads what people are searching for and how they react to search results and the search results are actually a reflection of that because it optimizes itself over time so what you see when you search for a keyword I always tell you the best way to do keyword research is just go to Google and put it in because Google is going to tell you exactly what people are looking for in terms of what type of content they want if it's a local search if they're ads whatever that looks like that's how we then can start to optimize this so if we come back here now and we look at this traditional funnel let me just scroll down and show you what we're doing now here so basically what we're doing is we're flipping the funnel upside down because again like i said traditionally and i've taught this before in the past uh five six years ago right when it was brutally competitive down here so when we were looking at this and saying okay well like we can't outrank a yelp in a law info right so therefore we need to go up funnel and try and backdoor traffic by creating content up here well the problem with that is that drives no business result and if you're not driving a business result then you're not gonna be around for very long as an agency, right? People aren't gonna to continue to pay you if you're not making them money. And again, this has been okay for the last 10 years because the market's been fat. There's been a lot of cash. Governments pump cash in the market. Businesses that have money, people have had money, but as the market's contracted the past couple of years and now we throw AI automation in here, it's gonna probably make the market even worse in terms of removing purchasing power from people, right? businesses are going to want a business result when they pay you. So creating content just to drive traffic and try and backdoor traffic that has no business result is not going to be acceptable anymore. And there's going to be no market for it. And people are only going to want to pay 
for traffic that converts. And I'm already seeing this now. It's gotten so much harder to sell SEO as a service if you're just selling based on traffic or going in and saying, yeah, we gotta create all this content because you just can't rank for this. It's gonna take 12 months. Nobody wants to hear that. They're not gonna pay you. And that is one of the reasons why SEO is kind of dying as a service because SEOs are positioning it and executing it wrong. So what we've done is we flipped the funnel and we've said, we don't care about this. We don't care about this. We're only gonna focus on these two, right? in terms of action and desire, right? So this content is okay because we can probably get some customers from it or at least build the right type of traffic that's deep in the intent. But we're gonna heavily focus on this and we're gonna heavily prioritize this content down here first. So what does that look like? How do we do that? And what do we do if it's too competitive to rank for a search? If we have a new law firm come in with no links, no authority, just built a brand new website, doesn't have the content, how are we gonna rank them for these brutally competitive keywords down here? Well, we're not just gonna look at it as a purely organic point of view. What we're gonna do is make another video on this later. We call it vertically integrated keyword research. And what that means is we make a list of all of these highly, highly, highly business impactful keywords. We just make a list of them, right? Traditional keyword research, nothing crazy here. Go to Google, Ahrefs, ChatGPT is even pretty good for this stuff. Use Google uh, paid keywords too to figure this out, but you just build a list of this and you then take each one of those keywords and you go to Google and you type it in and you see what comes up. So for example, DUI attorney near me. What if we change this to DUI attorney, see how the SERP changes. What do we see here? Well, we see a new format up here. These DUI lawyer sponsored Google screened. These are what are called local service ads. And then we get back in, we have two results here. Then we have the local pack here. People always ask, and then we get all this stuff down here. So if you were to look at this SERP right here, and you were to say, look at this keyword is brutally important to this client, all right? Assuming that they can pay for it, all right? Fees aside, assuming they can pay us to do their search marketing. Not, notice I said search marketing, not SEO. If we try and just jam them into the search by either doing content marketing, right? Uh, or even just trying to rank like their service page or their homepage here, is that really the, the best way to help this, this business? Do you think they're really gonna see a return on their capital investment from that by ranking all the way down here if you can even get in there? No, absolutely not. So what we wanna do is when we build this list of keywords, we wanna go through and search for each one of them. We wanna understand what's happening in the SERP. So if this is the first result here, local service ads, we should note that because that means for this keyword, we should be if doing what's best for this client in terms of making them more money in terms of getting them into the top spot here, because we know placement in terms of ad or organic, it's a very small difference in terms of what converts. What matters the most is being on top and being first and getting visible. That's the name of the game here. <laughs> so if we can do that, and that's the goal of what we're trying to do here and not looking at this as organic versus paid, just saying what's best for the prospect, what's best for the client, that's getting them up here and then getting them here and then getting them here. Well, we write that down. We say LSAs, we say pay-per-click and we say Google business. And then we say, you know, like website, right? So we're prioritizing and understanding what the list of this is for each one of these keywords. So we're vertically integrating keywords in terms of the list and then assigning the best way to get visibility for that keyword. We then take that list of keywords and then we go back to the client and we help them understand basically the impact of what each of these places would be and the costs associated with that. Now, if they can only do one, they're like, hey, I can't afford to do all four of those things. And we say, okay, like then what we should probably just do is start with an LSA campaign, get you some phone calls here, and then we can explore down here and just keep growing and expanding. So we're doing what's best for the client by putting them in a position, position to make money the fastest instead of just jamming old school SEO and just putting content up there. And that's, again, a means to an end for this business. And that's probably why you're struggling to make money in this game and you haven't scaled past a million bucks because you're not making your clients more money. So if we come back here, right, and we focus on these two, <clears throat> We start by exploiting all these keywords and then expanding here by doing some content marketing. Let me show you what this looks like in practice for an SEO client that we have. So we have this client, I'm just gonna show them to you. They do commercial LED lighting. Brutally, brutally boring business. <laughs> not sexy, um, not a ton of search volume. Um, what we've really helped them to do is two things. One is running paid search campaigns very aggressively to try and discover the most profitable keywords from them and then pushing those back into bottom funnel content on their website and consolidating top funnel content and redirecting that into bottom funnel content. This is a very simple and small thing that you can do. It's more of a strategy and almost a mentality approach to how you're doing SEO to focusing on the bottom funnel keywords. And that might mean that you might have to expand into doing paid options, but I'm telling you what's gonna happen with search is becoming holistic, right? It's not about organic versus paid versus local. It's about making your client more money. And if you are not doing that, then you are not gonna be in business for very long. So taking this small approach to committing to bottom funnel, no matter what the competition is, no matter what the volume is, but saying, if I can get my client visibility and traffic for this keyword, 
I'm going to make them more money. That's what you need to be focused on. So in the next video, I'm going to go a little bit deeper. In part two of this video, I'm going to show you live over the shoulder what we're doing with some of our clients with this. And even though it's not picking up a ton of traffic, it's picking up leads because what we're doing is we're hyper focusing on the bottom funnel and we're taking all that top funnel content that is a little bit fluffy and we're redirecting that relevancy into bottom funnel content. And we're picking up rankings almost overnight. So in part two, if you want to see it, make sure you comment below and I'll drop you the link. If not, I'll see you in the next video. Make sure to like, subscribe, please. So I don't have to keep flashing money around acting like a D-bag. I'll see you in the next video.